All right, welcome everyone to the Mind, Body, Spirit Virtual Summit. Today I'm very excited. We have Dawn with us through contact reflex analysis and Vervita, and she's going to talk to us all about the different things, but I wanted to quickly introduce her to you. So Dawn is the daughter of the late Dr. Dick Versendahl, who was the founder and developer of contact reflex analysis, a technique that uncovers the root cause of health issues. It is said that Dr. Versendahl was the genius, but Dawn is the teacher. Students appreciate her passion for teaching CRA and ability to break down complex sequences into simple, easy to learn steps. She is well known for her depth in CRA knowledge and many doctors regard her as their personal crisis care professional. Using the holistic philosophy of CRA, Don is currently developing a program called Royal Heart 30. It focuses on supporting the body as it works together as one integrated system emotionally, nutritionally, structurally, and environmentally. When all aspects are in balance, healing can occur and wellness can be sustained. So welcome, Don. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Of course. I was so excited to have you on here because just so you guys know some background, um, I've been practicing applied kinesiology among other different techniques um, that are similar to CRA, but totally different. And I finally experienced learning CRA this past September and it's totally transformed my practice and my life and the life of my patients. So I'm so grateful. Wow. Good to hear that. Love it. Love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, okay, so to start off, I'd love for our listeners to hear about you and your story and what got you into the health and wellness profession. Oh, how long do we have? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I will start it with my dad. My dad yeah. was uh, Dr. Dick Versendahl, still is. Uh, he passed away in 2014, but as a child, I grew up with him uh, developing contact reflex analysis, so I knew no different. I was the first guinea pig for it. And um, as he started testing and figuring things out, um, I was the product of that and figuring out, okay, what nutrition do I need? What's the root cause of the problem and everything. So finally, when I was in my 20s, I decided uh, that, yep, I will join him. And uh, I was had education background, and I was never going to be a teacher, and I was never going to work <laughs> in the health field at all. And uh, anything I, anytime I've said never, it I've always ended up doing right. what I will never do. Right. So I ended up helping him uh, develop the sequences for the technique and contact reflex analysis, and worked with him very, very very closely in teaching and developing the curriculum for the contact reflex analysis. So it was just a lot of fun and sharing the experiences with him, teaching alongside of him, Mm -hmm. uh, seeing people get results and supporting doctors as they support their patients was just a phenomenal experience for me and to be um, invited to do because he was my dad. And what girl doesn't love joining with their dad and having that kind of relationship that I did with my dad. It was a blessing, total blessing. Right. Totally. And so could you explain to our listeners, what is CRA? CRA stands for contact reflex analysis, and it's an actual technique where you analyze the energy that flows through every organ gland system and cell in your body. And if there's an imbalance in any of those areas, your body cannot function optimally. So we use reflexes, which are kind of portals of energy, Mm -hmm. that we're able to access that energy that is flowing through and determine if that energy is too much or too little, just like um, if you're having weather outside. Too much rain can cause cause flood and there's damage. Uh, Mm -hmm. Too little bit, too little, and it's drought, and that can cause damage. Same with energy in the body. Mm -hmm. Too much... Uh, emotions, too much nutritional chemistry, too much stress on the structures, or vice versa, the opposite. It's going to cause the body to be under stress and you're going to end up with symptoms and syndrome. So contact reflex analysis is the technique where we determine what's really going on when Mm -hmm. you're having all these symptoms going, happening. Right. Right. Totally. And how was, I'd love to hear from your firsthand experience with Dr. Versendahl how was this all developed? Like, where did he start? And how was this kind of like downloaded? And you talk about him kind of experimenting and testing stuff on you. How did that whole process start? 
Oh, that started way before I was born. Um, I know he had some stomach issues, and this was what he was telling me. He had some stomach issues, and he couldn't figure out what was going. He had gone to many doctors with Mm -hmm. it and uh, ended up going to a kinesiologist seminar, an AK seminar. Mm -hmm. And Dr. George Goodhart couldn't come for that weekend. And some other doctor, I don't remember his name, Dr. Johnston, I think. Anyway, he did reflexes of the mouth and he had tested it, tested my dad and figured out what the problem was. And he manipulated some reflexes in the mouth and the stomach issues totally went away. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, my dad went, you know, if you can do this, I have to explore. And he did dabble in the mouth and he's going, I can't do this, but I want to look at the other reflex and then start correlating reflexes with nutrition. And that had not been done before up right. and until that time. It, there were reflexes, obviously, with AK and also um, acupuncture. Mm-hmm. But he was really the first one that started doing exploring, okay, with blood tests and working with uh, other medical doctors and hematologists and stuff, getting the results and figuring out, okay, if this reflex is not in balance, then what nutrition will work to balance it out? Right. And he worked for many years uh, developing that. And me as a child, I, it wasn't this big wahoo. It was norm for right. me. It's just I what would it get was. My, it was what it was. I got yeah. my chiropractic adjustments. I got my nutrition. And um, it wasn't until later on where I really – started, you know, learning it. And then my mind was blown when I actually started learning it because it was my goal to help him put it in a textbook where he could actually teach. And I tell the story where I was flying with him to California the first time and tells you how old I am because I had cassette tapes with me and a whole bag full of cassette tapes, tape recorder, asked him all kinds of questions, trying to organize things. I'm a, I'm going to help him teach this in an organized way where people could learn. And so the whole way I'm asking him questions and he is just giving me all this information just spewing from his mouth and it's a long long flight from right. Michigan to California we get there and I'm like whoo I don't even know how many tapes I filled up and notebooks right. filled with writing get to the hotel room and I lay down and he knocks on the door and I open the door and I go oh my word right. what and he goes well we have more to do okay <laughs> so we went all afternoon The next morning we get up and I do a full weekend seminar, listening to him, watching him with with the intent of learning it and being able to present it. And then on the way home on Sunday after teaching all weekend, he wanted to do more. And I just let him talk. And I think I was in a zone. uh, (laughs) I walked in the house. uh, My husband greeted me at the door and he looked at me and goes, how was it? I fell apart, totally fell on the floor and sobbed and it was I said I think my dad just tried downloading his entire brain into mine and it just exploded (laughs) so that was even though I grew up with it it still was overwhelming to me and so when I teach seminars I I understand and I tell them don't try to take it all in at once right you can't you can't yeah you can't yeah and so that was really my first experience at trying to really understand and be able to do that. And I've come a long way since then. Totally. That's (laughs) awesome. I love it. Um, So for our listeners, why should somebody reach out to a CRA practitioner? What would be the benefit of them seeing someone that does CRA? Well, the benefit is that they are able to uncover the root cause of a health problem. And uh, with CRA, you can analyze, I use the triad, and when I say the triad, you can analyze whether the root cause is due to emotions, is it due to nutritional chemistry imbalance, or is it due to a structural imbalance, or a combination of any of those three. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you go to a doctor and they keep treating symptoms. And, you know, if you have a cut, you're going to put a Band-Aid on it, and it's going to heal. But your body can heal itself. It's, it's right. created to heal itself. And if you find what the root cause is and balance it and give it what it needs, the body will heal itself. So instead of treating just symptoms, okay, you have a migraine headache. I'm going to give you painkillers. 
well, it's going to make the symptom go away, right. but what's the root cause of it? Uh, right. Do they have a subluxation? It could be something like the feet are out of balance. It could be an emotional overload. It could be kidneys are filled with toxins backing up and giving migraines. So migraines has a lot of potential root causes, and you're going to want to find a CRA person who can say, all right, let's uncover the root cause, mm-hmm. and let's just start working through the triad. Let's find out what's the primary are right. we going to deal with emotions first? Are we Are going to deal with nutritional chemistry? Are we going to deal with structures? Most of the time, it's all three at some point and getting down to allowing the body to heal itself using that. Yes, totally. Now, I would love to know, what was the catalyst moment for you where you like fully went into CRA because you had said you would like never be in that profession, you would never teach. So what was the turning point where you were like, all right, Boy, you know, good question. What was that turning point? Um, as I grew up, my dad just loved uh, people and he was always the person to help people and always be out there helping his profession. And I can say, and I am not meeting anything bad by it, but he wasn't home very much. He was Mm -hmm. constantly doing the work, serving other people. I love his heart, and I love the service that he gave to people. But as the daughter, it's kind of like, Dad, here I am. Right. Right. Here I am. Um, Right. And loved me totally, have no doubt about that. But then when the opportunity came and he actually started talking to me about his work and some of the things he needed and, oh, I'd love to be able to um, have the doctors go through some sort of pattern. They're not catching. It's too much. And I was able with my gifts as a teacher to say, well, dad, if you do this, this and this, I think they'll be able to catch on with this kind of pattern. I can help you put a pattern together. Oh, great, Don. Well, then my dad actually invited me to join him, you know, and what it's kind of like okay, I'm going to join him and I have something to offer here. Right, right. And as I learned, it was, okay, I'm working again with my dad. I was not my dad. Right. Don't Didn't have to be him. He could be who he was and is the genius, but yet he needed me. What a cool right. thing. Right. And we were able to work side by side. So I think just the, okay, he was looking at me as an adult with gifts and abilities and saying, yeah, I need you. Yeah. Can you help me? And that was the, sure, would love to. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I'm sure you have so many examples of this, but I'd love for our listeners to hear an example of when you speak about the triad, right? So, for example, Mm -hmm. migraine headaches. You've got to look at, like, the holistic approach of what is really causing it, not just how do we make the pain go away. So if you could give an example of someone that through CRA maybe had tried a bunch of other modalities or medications or different treatments, and it was like the CRA approach that really made the difference and helped them heal. Okay. I'm trying to think of which one to share. Uh, Yeah. Um, I think uh, one of them is a chiropractor himself. He had fallen off a ladder and he had injured his shoulder and, um, He had gone through the therapy and he had gone through surgery to repair the shoulder. He had gone through therapy, physical therapy, chiropractic and everything. He was a basketball player. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to see me because his healing only got so far. He still had a lot of pain in his shoulder and the range of motion uh, was not there. Mm -hmm. So when he would shoot, he said to me, he goes, okay, I go up to shoot and I can only go like this. And he stopped. He couldn't raise his arm any farther than that. And so I went, okay, I'm going to do CRA on you. And I did, is it emotions, nutrition, and structure, and that kind of thing. And then I, and I can't quite, I think it was, I don't remember which one, but it ended up being that we had to work on his heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, I talk a lot about the heart in my, because my dad always called the heart the queen bee. The whole part. The rest of the body will all work together and it will twist and it will turn and it will swell all to support the heart mm-hmm. because um, if the heart goes, we're gone. Yeah. You can be brain dead, but uh, still alive. But the minute that heart is gone for good, the heart stops beating, we're gone. Mm-hmm. And um, so the entire body will sacrifice. It will work overtime uh, to support that heart. And uh, 
whenever you fall or have accidents, it could be emotional accidents, physical accidents, that heart kind of goes into an energetic heart shock. And I think we can all remember a time that if we've actually smashed our finger or hit a hip against the corner of a counter or whatever, your heart kind of goes, mm-hmm. and it's a physical <gasps> that yeah. happens. Well, most often we just move on and our heart goes, oh, okay, all right, that was that was fine, um, back into normal balanced energy. But when something, sometimes when something happens like that, a fall or an accident or a huge emotional hit through traumatic times in your life, um, that heart will stay in a heart shock. Well, when I tested this doctor, his heart was kind of in an energetic heart shock. So it was locked down and what his shoulder had done, it was kind of a supporter for the heart. It would not release because your shoulder is actually a backup system and a producer of energy for your heart. Mm -hmm. So that shoulder would not release fully until we got that heart back into balance energetically. So I worked with him uh, through technology and nutrition, Mm -hmm. um, and that was the Vervita product, Regenerzyme Heart. And over a period of just a couple of weeks, I think it was even a week, and he, whatever, was working uh, with that, he came in and he looked at me and goes, look at this. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Had totally released. Why did I work on the shoulder? No, I didn't work on the shoulder at all. I did use CRA to find what the root cause was of it. The root cause was making sure that the heart was balanced emotionally, nutritionally, and structurally. When that heart was balanced, that shoulder released and it could heal fully again. And he had full function. So that was just the story. Right. But I love examples like that because something that seems like a shoulder injury, like just a physical issue, right? So a lot of people might think, does he need more massages? Does he need more physical therapy or more adjustments or whatever? But it's really coming from an internal issue. Exactly. Which is so cool. My son had asthma um, for many, many years, and uh, my my youngest son, and that's another whole long story, but he had re- reactive attachment disorder and asthma, and what we needed to do was work on the heart, and it took a long time, but mm-hmm. I mean, he is fully healed from his asthma, and it, it's a really cool recovery story yeah. for him as well that's awesome. for that. Yeah, totally. Okay. Um so I want to touch a little bit more, go into the heart in a little bit more detail. Um, can you talk about what, how did your dad figure out that the heart is really, as you say, the queen bee and so important? I think through his research and just dealing with people constantly, he was always on the phone with people. And he was one that if there was one person that he could not help Mm -hmm. Uh, move towards wellness or heal and get that body to heal. He was always searching for that next answer. And over a period of time, it was just, it came back to, all right, it keeps coming back to the heart. Now, when I say it, it comes back to the heart, he did not just work on the heart, but he put a testing technique together with CRA Mm -hmm. that it was, okay, the heart is overwhelmed. We can figure that out through CRA. It's overwhelmed. But what's overwhelming the heart? And then he would be able to go to, let's for say, kidneys and bladder. Mm -hmm. And the kidneys and bladder, if you're not able to process the toxins, um, they back up into the body and then the heart starts scrambling because of all the toxins in the body. Mm -hmm. So you actually work on balancing the kidneys and bladder and then that heart can go oh, thank mm-hmm. you thank you mm-hmm. and so it was uh through that and his knowledge that he did have as a chiropractor um the dd palmer triad that was part of his background and yeah. what is the dd palmer triad for chiropractic you deal with the emotions you deal with in nutritional chemistry and you deal with the structures yeah. and my dad always taught dd in the beginning uh the structures was last. It was eating healthy foods. It was dealing with people's emotions, helping them tell their stories, um, getting them nutritionally balanced first. And then the very last thing that he discovered was the adjustment, which is what chiropractic is really known for and very powerful. Right. Totally. And so speaking about the heart and things that can negatively affect the heart, what are some lifestyle practices First, I want to talk about what people can avoid. So like what might drag the heart health down? Oh, boy, our American diet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. 
Oh, McDonald's, um, Burger King, all those lovely things. No, um, all those additives in food, um, the additives really add a whole lot of weight, of toxic weight to our bodies to try to move through. It puts weight on our kidneys. And when I say weight, I'm talking about the stress of being able to filter it through. So you've got your liver and gallbladder that has to filter anything we put in our body. And we have our kidneys that has to filter anything we put in our bodies because what we put in is the fuel for us to be able to move and do our daily life. And so what we put in is it premium fuel or is it low quality fuel because that's what our body is going to have to work on Mm -hmm. so a breakfast of cereal or pancakes with syrup and waffles with syrup and that's just junk fuel and that's what our body is going to have to reproduce itself with and give us energy for so number one uh, what we eat is one of the biggest things um number two it's stress Mm -hmm. um and this is something that i really have to work on because uh, I love to work. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love to work. I get up and I hit the hit the floor running and I'm right. go, 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 go. And don't often take the time just to be quiet, mm-hmm. to be present, to enjoy everything around me. And when life happens, that's a whole lot of stress on the heart. Right. And Life can throw curveball after curveball after curveball. And if you're just hitting the floor running all the time and allowing that stress to overwhelm your body, um, it's going to catch up with your heart. Right. right. Definitely. So the right. food and the stress and time. Yep. Yep. And so on the flip side, how can someone support their heart naturally? What are like easy things they could do today? Today, Mm -hmm. first thing I would say uh, is to have some drink, drink water Mm -hmm. and make it healthy water. We have a whole lot of additives in water and even distilled water takes everything out. So you need to have water that has the minerals in it because minerals are magnets that draw the fluids into your cells that you can use it. And my dad would always say, if you're going to drink water, put something in it, like a lemon, make it a food, add something to it. So if you're going to have your glass of water, add lemon to it, make it the right pH so that it's helping your body, throw in some fruit and just sip on that throughout the day. A lot of people are very dehydrated. We sit in front of our computers, we're on our cell phones and all those electromagnetic frequencies are very dehydrating for us. Mm -hmm. Um, Stress in itself is dehydrating. So Mm -hmm. having some water with fruit in it, not just regular water and not tap water. Um, that is one of the primary things to do. And I also think taking, if it's even five, 10 minutes, just to be here and mm-hmm. to acknowledge what's going on. If you can get outside into the sunshine, that is wonderful. If you can't, I live in Michigan, so sometimes it's right. like, nope, I don't want to go out in that. It right. was actually snowing here earlier today. I'm going, it's April, it shouldn't <gasps> be doing this. Yeah. But for me, I know I have to have my quiet time. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I just keep going and going and going and going. And how long can a heart keep going like that without the time just to restore and rebuild to keep going the rest of the day? So those are the two things uh, to start with today. And we can keep growing on that um, food you eat. Right, right. I want to ask you, because I actually don't think I've talked to anyone else about water yet. What is your favorite, what's your preferred type of water? Um, I actually, it's expensive. I actually, uh, if I have to get the bottled water, I'm not a fan necessarily of the plastic. Right. Um, but if I have to on the run, get the bottled water, I like Fiji. I do CRA scoring, so I score everything and right. it scores really, really well. Right. Um, I have filtered water through my refrigerator and it's through osmosis, which scores very, very well too. And so just to even drink that and then throw in some fruit, um, you know, I don't get too caught up in any of the other water sure. topics, so to speak. Sure. I score it with CRA. <laughs> totally. That's the answer to everything at the end of the day. There we go. Score, score it. it. Yeah. Score totally. it. Totally. <laughs> Do you find, I find this in my practice, um, that sometimes different types of water will score differently for different people. Like, I don't feel like there's only one type of water that everyone should drink. Right. Like, if people are super mineral depleted, maybe they need, like, a strongly mineral infused water 
versus other people don't. I or... would agree with that. I would agree with that. And um, and that's the beauty of CRA that you can test. Okay, what is wonderful for me water wise mm-hmm. might not be wonderful for somebody else. I don't get into that. Everybody has to drink the same amount of water a day right. either. Right. Um, because we're all different sizes. We all have different uh, activity levels where right. we would need some. And water can actually overwhelm your kidneys and bladder where it backs up. It's going, oh, thank you. As you're flushing all this stuff through me, now I'm just backing up. And a person will actually expand with more water because right. it's been too much and it can't flush out. Right. Uh, so I'm in agreement to test test the different water. Some I can say don't have tap water, but yet... Right. People have deep well water that is very, very good. Right. And it scores well. Sure. And the, it's very healthy for people. Sure. Other, like hotels, the water, I have not gone to a hotel yet where the water was really wonderful. It right. was clean because of, you aren't going to get parasites from it right. here in the U.S., right. but right. all the fluorides, chlorides, and everything else, right. is, it isn't good. Totally. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And so we talked about heart, the queen bee. Um, Let's say someone isn't seeing a CRA practitioner. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to delineate, okay, should I start kind of trying to work, really work on my heart health? Or should they focus on a different body system? Like how or what are kind of things people maybe can notice within themselves to know what they should start supporting? That's a really broad question, actually. And what I've done uh, is I just am starting putting a program together, and it's called Royal Heart 30. Mm -hmm. And it is a 30-day, for lack of a better term, kind of heart reboot. And it starts with working with your body from ground up. So the first level is dealing with your body, mind, spirit, and chaos. And people, this life, like I had said earlier, you know, it it can get pretty chaotic and life can throw curveballs. And I'll I'll just go back and where this started was, um, my dad was killed in a car accident in 2014. And then my brother, who I also worked closely with, uh, passed away in 2015. So my world was just tossed upside down Mm -hmm. because these were two men in my life that I loved completely and they loved me completely. So very, very blessed. And um, so I had children of my own, a wonderful husband. So I'm overwhelmed to try to what do I do with CRA? What do I do with Vervita? And people are now looking at me and where's, you know, my dad in my own grief. And I'm this boot camp kind of, kind of girl. It's like, I'm just going to suck it up and just going, I will not quit. And what happened over a period of time in, and it's just like, my brain went into overload because your brain is a backup systems to the heart. So your brain works and works and works and works and it keeps going and you can't sleep at night. Why? Because the heart's tired. Yeah. I had a broken heart, still have a broken heart. A lot of things when a lot of people are walking through that. So, um, what do you do when your, your life has been chaotic and everybody's is, everybody has a story to tell and they can't see a CRA practitioner. So I started walking through it and going, you know what? We have to deal with our bodies from ground up. And so we start in the chaos and how to put together a program to work with the chaos. And the very first thing to do is, all right, in chaos, just just hydrate. Mm -hmm. Just hydrate. Don't do a whole lot of else. Just hydrate. Vervita, I put together an essential oil that you can use at that level. The next level up is, all right, we have to work on the kidneys and bladder. Mm-hmm. And here are some foods you should eat. Here are the, here's what you should do with your diet to change it so that it's easy on your kidneys and bladder so your body can release the toxins mm-hmm. and go through it again, a nutritional essential oil that goes with that. And what are you going to do getting out in the sunshine? How do, what are some activities you can do to focus on? What are some affirmations you can say? So I, I'm putting together a full program that supports what we talked about earlier. It supports your heart full body, the hot, the body as it works together as a whole, but also giving you ideas on how to support your emotions, how to be, support yourself nutritionally, chemistry through your diet, the food you eat, uh, essential oils, and even nutritional supplements. And then there's also the structures. I'll say, okay, 
here's an action step. If you have a chiropractor, work right. when you're working on your kidneys and bladder, this is what you can go in and your, your health professional will help you. Sure. Kind of action steps. So going up that process, every five days, it changes. Mm, so you're, okay. you're going from chaos. Five days later, you're going to working on kidneys and bladder. Five days later. And so it's just moving them through a process that the body can heal and the heart can go, oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Because when you're helping the different parts of your body, the kidneys, the bladder, the stomach, the gallbladder, the liver, you're helping the kid, you're helping the heart. Right. And um, you're working on the brain helping the heart, but it goes up your body through your full body, emotionally, nutritionally, structurally, and supporting each aspect of it. Uh, So that is a great place where I think people who do not have a CRA practitioner could start. They could start working through it. And it's not that you have to stay in those five days. If you're in a level, you're going, oh, I can feel changes at this level. Definitely stay in that level for 10 days. Sure. Stay there. And just work on that level and work on your diet. When I say diet, I don't mean depriving yourself or whatever. Working, using those foods, eating that same way, that healthy right. way. Right. Working mind in that way, supporting supporting all aspects of your health in that way. So that's what started, and it's called Royal Heart 30. And uh, the people who are in this group are Royal Heart Warriors. Mm-hmm. And um, there's so many people out there who have the broken hearts. Um, and it's not even broken hearts, necessarily. It's people who are under stress all the time. Um, uh, parents, they have children, and they're raising their children. And then when the children are growing, you're throwing into the workplace, but by that time, then you have parents that you have to take care of, and you're a caregiver for parents, and then there's grandchildren, and then Mm -hmm. let's sprinkle in all other aspects of life and trauma and emotional uh, trauma that happens, and so this is really wonderful for people to go, okay, how do I support my heart, and without being a boot camp warrior, which I would love, but that's not what I needed, I actually needed to take the time mm-hmm. to slow down to be me I started I tried running I tried um, doing the weightlifting and everything else my body would ju- was just expanding it wouldn't do anything it wouldn't yeah. let it go yeah. and mind would just go faster and faster so I actually just me being quiet mm-hmm. and I actually started yoga which is phenomenal for me and I had always sworn I'd never do yoga right there's another <laughs> there you go. it just wasn't you know hardcore enough you yes, know but yes. oh it, it's it's pretty hardcore I see these women they are strong strong women yeah. wonderful oh, yeah. and men for yoga so that was just me speaking out of ignorance at that point right, right. so understanding that to be a warrior is to fight for your heart and um and with your heart Uh, during some of these hard times, I was just crying. And I had said to my mom, I said, I don't know what, I don't know how to handle all of this anymore. I don't know how to fight these battles. And she just looked at me and she said, Dawn, fight with your heart, Mm -hmm. fight with your heart. And I had said, it's going to make me cry. I said, mom, my heart's broken. And she said, that's exactly the place where you start. You fight with your broken heart, and it's filled with love. And that's why I developed the Royal Heart 30 and the Royal Heart Warriors and um, going from there. Because these are going to be people who are going to be fighting for their hearts and for other people with broken hearts. And they're going to be fighting with a heart filled with love, but from a place where it's one of love and acceptance, and I can do this. Right. And it doesn't have to be the kick-butt, battle-worn that type of thing. That's what we do anyway. At least that's what I do every day. Totally. Yeah. I find that a lot with people. It's like they always think or a lot of the times tend to think that they need to do more or work right. harder or exercise harder, right? And a lot of people, especially when you're talking about weight reduction, they really actually would benefit more from like taking a nap than working out. <laughs> But it's so, it's hard to get your mind around that because that's our society is like, go harder, burn more calories, do an extra CrossFit class, you know, and for especially certain people's, I don't know if you've ever studied much with Ayurveda, 
Um, but they have interesting, like they're called doshas. And I'm in right. no way an expert on Ayurveda. But what I like about it is it's like you figure out what dosha you are. And so um, if you are like a pitta, which is really fiery people. So like I would say you probably fall into that category. Um as do I. So people like us that are like, go, 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 do a million things. We kind of thrive off of that, but it's not your fire is your gift, but it also can be imbalanced. Right. And so those fiery people actually, they say like, never do high intensity exercise. That's the last thing you need. You should be doing like restorative stuff like yoga Right. Or like, you know, brisk walking or really light jogging or swimming, like stuff like that. Even though we might feel really good doing a high intensity class. Right. It ups our like fire even more, but it's destructive because we're already so fiery. So. Right. I think that's such an interesting thing that, you know, everyone wants to know what's the way to work out. What's the diet? What's the exercise protocol I should be on? And if you look, you know, back into the ancient medicines, like our Ayurveda, there's no cookie cutter approach. Right. And that's like the beauty in CRA and, and what you do and all of this stuff is everyone's different. Right. You know, for some people, that type of exercise might be awesome and that might help them get the results they're looking for. For other people, it could be destructive for them. Right. And a lot of people with a broken heart, we, you know, it's just like, you have to get up, get up and do more, mm-hmm. get up, do not stay there, get up and keep going. It's right. that warden, the brain turns into a warden and has right. the whip, keep going hard, keep going. You've got to do one more thing. You have to. And it's like, you get to a point, you're like, I can't do one more. I'm, right. I'm done. Right. And yeah, it's just very, very interesting. The bottom line is get the body in balance mm-hmm. and too much one way or the other is not healthy. Yeah. And to find that balance is what you need for totally. healing. Totally. Okay. So we'll talk more about the Royal Heart 30 later because I know okay. you have a great offer for people. Um, but I want to get a little bit more into the Vervita side. So I'd love to know at what point did you guys decide to add like your specific nutrition? Were you always doing Vervita products or were you ever using other products? Nope. Uh, we, my dad developed CRA and he was definitely mm-hmm. using other companies uh, for C- CRA. And um, he used a, a variety of different ones. But then in 2009, the economy had tanked and uh, the doctors were having this huge um, amount of inventory on their shelf and their patients didn't have the money to purchase the large amount of inventory and the doctors didn't have the money to continue buying the large amounts of inventory and so um my dad was going okay i know how the body works together as one integrated system it's not just one organ that's isolated and uh it does not use just one vitamin in isolation or one mineral in Mm -hmm. isolation he goes i am going to create a company that has 10 nutritional products that are designed as formulas so each of the ingredients in the formula works together as a whole and it supports a system of the body not Mm -hmm. just one organ and it's not just addressing okay you need one vitamin or one mineral and because actually vitamins and minerals they work together very very well they don't work in isolation you need one to help the other work even better. And so he was the genius behind all of this and he figured out exactly what you need for this and that and the other thing to create the formulas. For example, Gastro Digest. It is, instead of having, I think one of the companies had six, seven, eight different nutritional products to support digestion and then another right. to support the gallbladder, another to support the liver, bile duct, you got pancreas, all these parts of it. There is one formula gastro digest it supports the digestive system from all the way from your mouth all the way to your rectum and and it supports all those various organs uh, through the formula so that the entire system works together as a whole and um, that's what he did with each aspect of it and so he very very successfully managed the entire body 
um, just with these 10 nutritional products. And the doctors were very thankful that they only had to have 10 nutritional sure. supplements on their shelf. And the patients were over the moon happy because right. they didn't have to have 50, 60 different nutritional products on right. their shelf, one one kind for them and another one for each of their kids and their right. husband and that type of thing. Right. He did the same thing with six essential oils. So instead of hundreds of essential oils out there, we have six essential oils that are top quality mm -hmm. um, essential oils that work through each of the systems in the body and balance a, balance a different aspect of it. So it's a very concise, precise formulas for wellness, treating the whole body as it works together as one integrated system, mm -hmm. not individual organs and glands. Sure. sure. Yeah. And at what point did you guys add the oils? Was that after the nutrition? They were our first. Same time. They yeah. were, nope. They were actually first. Oh. Uh, they were, yeah, we had no nutrition. We started out with the six essential oils. That's Got where it. we started. And yeah. so 2009, April, they were all all the essential oils were out there, and I, I want to even say 2009, maybe May or June, our first nutritional products were out there. They were being okay. developed. It took probably a good year, year and a half to get all of those right. out there. And Spiracel was our very last nutrition that we finally, right. and which is phenomenal. Right, totally. What I know, essential oils are like becoming a big kind of buzzy, popular thing. Lately, right. um, can you explain, at least in regards to CRA, how do you view the oils as being complementary? Because, yes, they're nutrition, but they're a little bit different, right? They also help balance, like, emotions and energy. And so why is it important to consider essential oils as part of your protocol? I use nutrition essential oils together, but I will err on the side of uh essential oils first. I love them because first of all, it goes right past the blood brain barrier. You open a bottle and just the aroma of it, it passes right through the blood brain barrier. So the effect is immediate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's the essence of a plant. The oils, the essential oils are actually the essence of a plant. As if you think about the plant, uh, the essential oils are there for the health of a plant. It can repel insects. It can um, actually work to heal a plant, keep things away. So it is part of it, it, its own system to keep a plant healthy and support it nutritionally. So the actual essence of the plant is there and we're using that for our own benefit. And like I had said, the results of even opening a bottle are immediate. Mm -hmm. And when you put it on topically, it goes to your skin, which is your body's largest organ, and it works immediately on that. And when you have the high quality essential oils, um, the ones that are medicinal slash therapeutic grade, mm -hmm. not the ones that are used for fragrance and flavor. Right. Those are adulterated. Those have additives in them. Um, Vervita is the therapeutic grade. And you work with those and you are getting the very powerful plant essence and change. And your body will change with those energies mm -hmm. of it. And if you're opening up any essential oils, if they smell the same, every single time you open up a bottle, you might want to question are they putting in synthetics to keep that smell the same? If you dump it out and it looks the same every time, uh, year after year, uh, you might want to question because mm -hmm. the pure essential oils, as a crop grows, you're going to harvest it and you're going to want you, you, the natural oil as it is. I smell some of the oils out there and they smell sweet and some of them are peppermint and you're like, oh, this smells like sweet peppermint. Well, it's additives to it to make mm -hmm. that sweet peppermint smell and uh, there's synthetics to give it that smell. They're, and they will say it's essential oils, but it's more on the fragrance. Uh, all they have to do is add a couple drops of the real essential of the essential plant in there and then mm -hmm. add some and they'll just right. say it's peppermint. Right. But uh, you can tell if it, if it changes over the time, the look of it and the smell of it, it should shift a little bit when uh, you have the actual plant and it is pure. Right. right. And people don't understand that. They'll open up a bo bottle and they'll go, well, this looks different or it's thinner or it's thicker or whatever. And right. Yes, because the crop 
it all depends on if they had a lot of rain, not a lot of rain. Sure. That, totally. Anything that could make a crop change. Right. You're going to have the smell change. You're going to have the look change. Right. Yeah. And how did you guys, so how did you find um, ways to make the oils so pure? Because you're so conscious of the quality and what's going into those oils. So how did you guys go about that? Right. Well, we found an aromatherapist uh, who was an expert in her field, and uh, she started teaching more about um, the essential oils and what was good and not good. So we really learned a lot from her. And she had sources, and she would get in some of the raw materials, and uh, my dad would go over there, mm -hmm. and so would I, and we'd score it. We'd test it. We test it for quality. Now, anything she got in, she's a woman of integrity and the company's well, um, people of integrity there. So we know that all the sources that we get it from are absolute top quality. Right. And a thing that people don't know either is I think um, ours are single species essential oils. And what that means is there is not another farm growing that specific plant for 40 miles. Like uh, we don't get our lavender here from the U.S. because there's so many lavender farms around that they cross pollinate. Hmm. And so they are not single species lavender here in the United States. So we go for the single species and we get the top quality that we can growing with the top growers. And they cannot have a farm growing that same product within right. 40 miles. Right. And uh, so some of ours comes from the United States. Some are not from the United States, but they're all tested outside of the United States that they come in, but they're also tested third-party testing within the United States when they come in, just to, just when that. So we started with that. And as we're developing the formulas, then it's okay. We believe you that it, it's gone through all these tests. We believe you that it says, but now let's put it on the gold spectrum test, and that's having Dr. Versendahl Right. score the formulas, score right. the raw materials, and I'm scoring them and everything. And they just test the energy of it is top energy, top quality. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's kind of the process that we had gone through. Totally. And how did, I know that the, they're all blends, right? So you guys aren't just creating a lavender oil. They're all right. blends within the, the CRI system. So how did you guys come up with the for the blends well it was together. what's our goal what's mm -hmm. our goal um we do have one that's just straight black cumin mm -hmm. and uh that is the highest quality black cumin and we use that it was wonderful for the digestive system it was mm -hmm. wonderful to support the blood because it's a whole food it has all the mm -hmm. b vitamins the omegas and everything else it didn't need anything else right, right. it's phenomenal as is but then it's um how do we support the heart and all the aspects of the heart? So then we started putting, doing research on what are the plants uh, that will support the heart. And we have rosewood and rose and, you know, tangerine. It's very mm -hmm. stimulating. We looked at the re what uh, each oil would do. And oils themselves, they don't just do one thing. Mm -hmm. They do many things. Mm -hmm. And so when we put these formulas together saying, here's our focus, we're going to focus on the heart. We put that group together, and I know Heart Harmony has 17 different mm -hmm. ingredients in it, different oils to make that one blend. And then we put them together. Just the synergy of how they work together mm -hmm. was phenomenal in supporting the heart and all the backup systems right. to the heart. And uh, then we thought, okay, we're going to support, let's say we're going to support the brain and the nervous system. What, what are we going to need to calm the nervous system, calm the brain, and that type of thing? Okay, then we got present moment, mm -hmm. and it was very calming, and we put ingredients together for that. Well, we have to work on the kidneys or the bladder, that filter, and what about, yeah, if they don't, then we have this immune system that really needs to be filtered and cleaned and strong and supportive. Well, then it's immune harmony and what do we need? And that's a very different formula yeah. uh, to help the, the kidneys. So we took the systems of the body and went, all right, what symptoms might they have? What might it go through these organs? What's the job of the system? Yeah. And how can we support the body in that area to heal and do its job well? So how can we support your entire immune system? How can we support your kidneys and bladder? That type of thing. 
Um, so each one of the six oils has a focus and a purpose for a mm-hmm. part of the body yep. to function optimally. Yep. And what is your, this is probably an impossible question, but what is your favorite oh, way to use oils? Topically, did bath. you use a hot bath? Bath. That's not an impossible question. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. Oh, I love to have a bath. And if I can force myself to sit down long enough to say, okay, you're going to have 20 minutes where you're just going to sit and enjoy this. It's like, okay, I have to schedule that in. But oh my word, it is just (laughs) phenomenal when I actually do it and sit in a warm bath and and then I'll put in drops of essential oils and I'll just figure out what I need. Okay. I have this going on. I want to support my heart or I want to support my brain or I want to right. whatever I'll just throw in doesn't even have to be rocket science right five right. drops of this 10 drops of that whatever right. Right. and then sit in the bath with some Epsom salt it's just oh that's a taste of having yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like oh thank you god <laughs> I remember a few weeks ago I was watching some of the old CRA videos from your dad and he was saying like after a seminar he would go and get in a bath and I think he said with like 15 pounds of Epsom salt like oh, something yeah. crazy oh, yeah. like that <laughs> yeah so oh awesome. definitely he would put yeah. in full full one ounce bottles of essential oil and with 10 15 pounds of Epsom salt but he scored it all I mean yeah, it wasn't right, like he did right. will really do things he right. actually scored it out right. using CRA this is what I needed right. But he gave of himself so yes. much on a weekend and during the weeks when he was teaching that when he came in, all the toxins from being on an airplane and sure. and the restaurants and the lights and teaching and sick people around him yeah. all the time, he came home. He really had to just draw in Recharge. with the essential oils and have the Epsom salt draw out. Yep. And I, oh, remember I like one that j- analogy. With the yeah, drawing and that, in with the oils and drying out with the salt. That's exactly yeah. what happens. I mean, the essential oils that the body just draws that all in, and it it goes where it needs to go to balance mm-hmm. whatever it is out. And then the Epsom salt, it's that magnesium. It, it goes in, but it draws out any of the impurities mm-hmm. in there. And yeah, I know one gentleman had said to my uh, my dad at a seminar when he told that story about how many pounds of Epsom salt, he goes, are you kidding me? No way. That would kill you. <laughs> and my dad's going, well. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, totally. Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, and, and if you think been... if you think about the, um, like, I don't know if you've ever done flotation therapy. No, I have not. Oh, you have to do it. You would love it because you're a bath girl. Yeah. So it's like the sensory deprivation tanks where, um, so sometimes they're like little pods, but sometimes they're like almost ceiling height. The, the place I go, I like because they're tall. So you're not, it's not like claustrophobic, but it's only probably six or eight inches of water. So it's not deep, but the okay. concentration of Epsom salts is so high that it's like the same as the Dead Sea. So you just flow, oh, you flow. effortlessly. Yeah. Yeah. And then they turn all the lights off. So it's total sensory deprivation and they heat the water to a very specific temperature. It's the same temperature as the outside of your skin. So mm. you can't tell like where your body ends and the water. Yeah. See, you're already like, eh. I'm in the zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in the zone. <laughs> yeah. But that is like so much off some salt that like, that's more than you would ever even put. You'd, right. Than you right. ever even put in a bath. So yeah. Oh, but you have to try oh, that sometime. Right. You I will. Yeah. I will. They're popping up the all idea. over the place. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a whole thing. <laughs> um, okay, so if you could only use one Vervita product a day, which would it be? Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Ooh. Like you're going to a desert island, you can only take one product. Which one would you take? <laughs> Boy, uh, 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 uh. okay, it would be an essential oil. I know that. Yeah. That would just speak to my heart, definitely. It's a toss up actually between Heart Harmony, which yes. is my favorite 
It's my favorite um, one, too. And yeah. it, it's everyone's favorite. And Elite Harmony, because right. Elite Harmony is 20% of each of the others. Right, right. So you get that's all what Elite of Har- it with Elite it's Harmony. all in one Elite Harmony. So I guess I'd have to do Elite Harmony because right. I had to survive. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> and you, I'm a survivor. But I will you would survive. wish that it was Heart Harmony. <laughs> but I wish it was Heart Harmony. Yeah. It is, the Heart Harmony is in there. Yeah. But it's just not as the, the full strength it's not and as everything yummy. else. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. It's not quite as yummy, totally. but it is. It is the the creme de la creme, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's what I yeah. think. That's what my answer would be too, because you get the most bang for your buck. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If you're going on a desert island, you have to survive. Yeah. So you need all aspects of your body to be supported for totally. that. Totally. And I need to survive long enough to get home to get heart harmony. Right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, okay, boy. so for our listeners at home, because we've talked t- talked a lot about the products nutritionally and the oils, how can they order these products? Okay, um, it's available just going to vervitaproducts.com, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and all the products I've talked about are available through that website. Mm-hmm. And um, the telephone number, if they'd rather call, call it in, uh, it's also on the website, too. And um, so vervitaproducts.com. Mm-hmm. And we will link, um, just so you guys know, in the notes with this interview, we'll put all the links there where you guys can order stuff and all the different things we talked about. Um, okay, I have a couple fun questions that I want to ask you unrelated to okay. Sarah. Okay. Um, what is your morning routine? Oh, okay. Let's see. Um... I have started something um, because it's good for me. I try to sleep in till I wake up, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, yeah. and not set an alarm. And I am able to do that. And I used to get up at 5 o'clock every morning, hit the, hit the floor running. Right, There's always right. something to do. Right, right. And now I don't set an alarm, and I am awake at between 6.30 and 7. Right. And so that is a very good thing. I am not a breakfast person. I don't like to eat breakfast. So when I wake up, I do my, here's my worst thing. I eat, I drink coffee. I love uh-huh. coffee. Uh-huh. Absolutely love coffee. So yep. I'll make my coffee and I'll sit down and I'll have my time of devotions. Yep. And I'll sit and I'll pray and do my devotions. And then um, when I'm finished with that, I'll make myself a smoothie. And it'll mm-hmm. be a fruit smoothie with almond milk and stuff like that. And by that time, I'm itching and going, okay, right, right. I've done enough Let's go. time. This is good. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Right, right. <laughs> time to get things done. And so that has been very good for me yeah. um, to get up and have that quiet time and just that actually sleeping in till I wake up is That's a big deal. has been wonderful. Yeah, totally. Okay. And what is your hope for the future of CRA? Oh, that everybody knows about it and gets mm-hmm. a benefit from it. And everybody has a CRA practitioner that they are able to see. They're, wouldn't that be wonderful? Totally. Absolutely. Wonderful. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. You can help me make that happen. I'm Abby's on it. Wa- We're on Abby's board. Abby's watching them. She's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No, I think even with the... Um, with the Royal Heart 30 and the Royal Heart Warriors, I would love to be able to have a a health professional that is the mm-hmm. guide for each one of these lay people out there to say, you know what, I'm going to walk with you through this and I am a professional of CRA and I can find the root cause of the health problem and guide you through this process, sure. Sure. the Royal Heart 30, and give you exactly what you need. Right. So being able to place um, anybody out there that needs help with any health issue, right. any wellness issue whatsoever can be partnered with a health professional that can help them with CRA. That is a huge dream and it would be so phenomenal. Yeah, that's awesome. And what recently, I know the Royal Heart 30 thing, but is there anything else that's really firing up, like firing you up lately? Like a book you read or some new topic you're super interested in or... Oh, boy. Besides the Royal Heart 30, that has just been totally taking everything over in my brain and uh-huh. how to do this. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to be stuck going, I can't think of it. I read all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it's a lot of inspirational stuff. It'll be quotes here, that kind of thing. Um, sure. I'm trying to think of what the last one I read. I just, um, what's the book again? I just reread uh, Story of Your Heart, and I can't remember the name. Sorry, I'm going to have to come back. I just it, <laughs> That's okay. It's a very common one. It's all about the heart, and it's the cardiologist who... The heart speaks. The heart speaks. Thank you very I much. I read over there. Like, yes. Yeah. I just so reread good. that. And again, it's all about the person's, people's stories. And yeah. I, and when she had said, if you listen to people's stories, mm -hmm. you'll be able to find the cause of what's yes. going on yes. there, the reason they're having their symptoms. So yes. she's a cardiologist. So yeah. it's kind of like, listen to the stories and yeah. you will be able to find out why their heart is as it is. Right. It's like, oh, it's so true. Yeah. No, that book's so awesome. I'll link the book. And the information yes. too, because everyone should read it. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm it's going, really I don't good. know why I couldn't remember the no, heart. It's okay. The heart. <laughs> it came to me because I, the only reason I ordered it was because I was watching um, Dr. Versendahl's DVDs and he talked about the book. Yeah. It is and one of my awesome. favorites. Yeah. One of my favorites. It's a great way for people that they're called to CRA and this kind of perspective of looking at the body holistically, but really looking at the heart. It displays it in a great way. That... And it's not a hard read. No, it's an it's an easy read. Yeah, yeah. it's not too sciencey or anything like right. that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So I'd love for you to tell our listeners how can they find or keep in touch with you. Uh, you can go online. Uh, my website. Uh, dawnrenee.com that's d-a-w-n-r-a-n-a-e it's like renee can be spelled a whole lot of different names mm -hmm. and so that's my personal website and i will have information there it'll be my story it'll tell you about where you can go find more with CRA, where you can find more with vervita and it'll also tell you um about the royal heart 30 if you want to be involved with that uh, you can go online and visit me there you can also email me dawn at dawnrenee.com um, and that's my email and, um, respond there. Awesome. And so I know you've come up with a really great offer for our listeners regarding the Royal Heart 30. So I'd love if you'd speak to that for a second. All right. Yeah, we are going to do the launch in September. That's what we're looking for to launch this program. And like I had said, the program uh, supports people who need to focus on their own health and wellness. Like uh, life has gotten overwhelming for them and they need to finally address their own health issue, health issues. And so what I am wanting to offer is an opportunity to for you to be a part of the soft launch of being one of the first Royal Heart Warriors in mm -hmm. going through this program. And so being a part of this, you would get the, the book slash PDF uh, online uh, from me. And we also have the Vervita kit of essential oils. And I'm in development right now of a specific essential oil and I don't even have the name yet it's either going to be Royal Heart or it'll be Warrior or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's going to only be offered to the Royal Heart Warriors it will not it'll be a Vervita product but it will not be offered to anybody else right. but the Warriors who are fighting for your own heart and for loving in the hearts of other people. So to be part of that, I want to give you that offer that you can be a part of the soft launch, be one of the first warriors and uh, work through this program and uh, be supported through your own health and wellness with this. And uh, to find that, go to my website, mm -hmm. Dawn at um, excuse me, dawnrenee.com. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a link there and, and it'll say interested in this. And I would love to be a part of the soft launch and it'll give you an opportunity to get these things and we can get you started on this journey. And that would be very exciting to do this journey together. Totally. That's awesome. All right, guys. So go ahead, check out the notes from this interview. We'll have all that information if you want to sign up for um, the soft launch and receive all those benefits and just to connect with Don and learn more about CRA and the products and how to support your own heart and your own health. Um, thank you so much, Don. 
for being thank you abby this, this was wonderful awesome. totally absolutely wonderful all right and you guys stay tuned um for more interviews and again all the information is below to follow up with don all right thanks don thank you love ya bye-bye